We will begin the press conference in three minutes. I remind you that translation into Romanian and Russian is available if you can get headsets at the entrance of the room. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the press conference of the International Observation Mission to Moldova's Presidential Election. My name is Louis Poulain and I work for the UAC Parliamentary Assembly. 
Here with us today, we have Special Coordinator Akka Badin, who leads the Short-Term OAC Observer Mission. Also with us, Mrs. Elizabeth Schneider-Schneider, who is the head of the delegation for the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. Mr. Gary Jorgen Quakerbolt, who is the head of the OEC Parliamentary Assembly delegation. Mr. Igor Scholtes, who leads the delegation from the European Parliament. And Mr. Douglas Wake, who heads the OEC of your long-term international observation mission here in Kishinev. We will proceed in the following way. First, I will give the floor to Mrs. Dali for uh, the delivery of the statement of preliminary findings and conclusions. Then I will hand the floor over to Mrs. Schneider-Schneider, then to Mr. Bickerbolt, then to Mr. Schultes, and afterwards to Mr. Wake for their remarks. After all that is completed, we will open the floor for questions. And please note that due to time constraints, we need to close this press conference by 2.30, and we will only accept questions from members of the media. Before you ask a question, I will ask you to identify yourself and your organization. At the end of this press conference, you will find copies of the statements outside of this room. And now, I give the floor to Mrs. Daddy for her remarks. Thank you, Louis. The first term, I want to thank the people of Moldova and the authorities for their warm hospitality. Like two weeks ago, we were very well received in the public stations we visited. The presidential election runoff was competitive with respect for fundamental freedoms. The campaign, featuring televised debates, allowed the two candidates to address voters directly. However, increasingly polarized media coverage, harsh and intolerant rhetoric, and continued instances of abuse of administrative resources detracted from the process. Although the candidates devoted considerable attention in their activities to social and economic issues, and in particular to tackling corruption, we observed negative campaign tactics, which included sexist language and gender stereotyping, as well as instances of homophobic language. Technical preparations for the second round were generally administered in a professional manner, and overall election day procedures were positively assessed. Candidate representatives and observers were largely able to follow all stages of voting, counting, and tabulation without restriction. The more intense campaign in the lead up to the second round succeeded in mobilizing a greater number of voters and offered the citizens of Moldova the opportunity to express their choice. Overall, this underlines a desire for continued civic mobilization, and I encourage the newly elected president to support the reforms that have been initiated to restore public confidence in state institutions and ensure the country's stability. I want to thank all the colleagues from the OSC Parliamentary Assembly, Council of Europe, European Parliament, and ODI. There are many more details in our written report. For now, I just want to give you some highlights, and I will give my colleagues an opportunity to also add their comments. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Tallinn. And now I give the floor to Mrs. Schneider-Schneider from the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe for her remarks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to say that I share the preliminary findings and conclusions on the second round of presidential election presented by my colleague Arthur Dali, the leader of the short-term observation mission. Yesterday, members of our delegation visited a number of polling stations in Chisinau and other regions of Moldova. As I said, two weeks ago in Chisinau, the primary concern of party delegation was not the outcome of the presidential election, but rather the functioning of the democratic electoral process. Yesterday also, as two weeks ago, we noted that in Moldova the people made their choice in a free manner and that the voting day was very well organized. 
I have to repeat that an election is not limited only to voting day and, once again, our delegation noted that the same serious and long-standing concerns were, were observed during the election campaign of the second round. Of particular concern were politically biased media strongly associated with major political parties and serving a tool as a tool for propaganda. These and other concerns, unless addressed in a timely and effective manner, will erode citizens' trust in the democratic electoral process. I will present the Assembly's report on the presidential election in Moldova on 25 November as uh, the standing committee meeting in Cyprus. Our Assembly stands ready to cooperate with the authorities of the Republic of Moldova through our monitoring procedure and in cooperation with the Venice Commission to improve the election legislation, most importantly, this implementation. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I now give the floor to Mr. Bickenwald from the EOC Parliamentary Assembly for his remarks. Thank you. I agree with uh, what my <coughs> colleagues uh, have uh, already said, uh, but I want to add a few uh, additional comments on behalf of the EOC Parliamentary Assembly. Our delegation uh, includes uh, 11 observers, roughly members of parliaments from across the EOC area who were also uh, present two weeks ago. The delegation I represent agrees that Moldova has proven its uh, commitment to the democratic values and uh, administered a uh, competitive election. I do note that the legal framework is uh, incomplete when it comes to the second round and it leaves too much room for interpretation. Matters such as timely rulings on uh, uh, complaints and appeals, uh, the official start of the run of campaign, application of uh, campaign uh, financing rules, and voter list uh, management are not properly regulated. I would like to add uh, that uh, Although election day was calm and uh, procedures were well administrated within the country, we have received reports showing that arrangements for a high turnout in some organizations abroad proved insufficient, even insufficient. Our preliminary findings and conclusions have uh, identified several other issues. I would like to reiterate that we stand ready to work hand in hand with our colleagues in the Moldovan Parliament to address these shortcomings and uh, strengthen the electoral uh, legislation and producers. I once again wish the Moldovan people uh, continued success in uh, this process. And I also want to thank all those who warmly welcomed us in the polling stations yesterday. Thank you. Thank you, and I now give the floor to Mr. Schultes from the European Parliament for his remarks. Thank you. <clears throat> I would like to remind my concern from the first round. The lack of transparency in the area of campaign finance and the possibilities of media regulation that this can provide. This concern not only activities linked to the election, but also the founding of political party generally. A fundamental uh, reform is needed in this area. The financing of political parties and the election campaign must be rigorously and effectively scrutinized. More specifically, during the second round, it becomes apparent that the legal framework for campaign finance does not specifically address the second round. For example, it's unclear whether the expenditure limit is applicable for the first round only or both rounds. Legislation should be adopted to provide a clear legal framework for campaign financing for all stages of the electoral cycle. I would also like to stress the concrete measure must be taken to facilitate the voting of the many citizens of Moldova and the Europe. 
We have reports of Moldova's traveling long distance to reach the nearest polling station of long queues of some polling station coming out of balance. Lesson needs to be learned, and responsible authorities should be considered all option to solve this serious problem. Simply, this is not fair. Thank you. Thank you, and I now give the floor to Mr. Lloyd from the USC OTR for his reports. Thank you very much. The OSC OTR long term observation mission has been observing the presidential election process here in Moldova since the beginning of October. And we'll continue through next week to follow post election developments. We'll also be preparing a report, a final report with recommendations for improvement of the electoral process in Moldova. At this point, given the extensive comments of my colleagues who have highlighted many important issues in our preliminary statement, I would only like to emphasize two positive messages and two messages that are a bit more unfortunate. On the positive side, the candidates had real opportunities during this second round to present their visions to voters, especially in the televised debates. Holding such debates is definitely a good practice. But it is unfortunate, as colleagues have pointed out, that the voters were often confronted with harsh and even intolerant rhetoric rather than serious discussions of alternative policy approaches. And it's really troublesome that, as in the first round, we again find it necessary to refer to gender stereotyping as well as sexist and homophobic language. Again, on the positive side, regarding election day, we were glad to see that voters actively participated in a process that our mission observed to be very smooth across the country. But again, as my colleagues have pointed out, it was, of course, very regrettable for us to hear reports that many citizens were unable to vote at specific polling stations that ran out of ballots. Finally, I will again take this opportunity to praise the openness and the cooperative spirit that we encountered from the Central Elections Commission of the Republic of Moldova and all of our other Moldovan counterparts, both official and unofficial. Our mission has been warmly received and will take away fond memories from our time in this very hospitable country. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the floor is now open for questions. I remind you that we only take questions from members of the media. So before asking a question, please identify yourself and the media organization you work for. Any questions? Are there any questions? Uh, from Spain. To sum it up, can you say that the elections were up to international standards, yes or no? What 
we know is that according to the CDC, the Central License Commission, because we don't observe ourselves out of the country, there was uh, there were no ballots left in Bologna, in one station in Bucharest, in one station in Paris, in one in London, and one in Moscow. I should add that while we refer to these uh, polling stations outside of Moldova, there were also two polling stations designated for voters from Transnistria within the Republic of Moldova that uh, ran out of ballots, they used the maximum 3,000 ballots. But of course, within the Republic of Moldova, there were opportunities for voters to be uh, redirected to other polling stations where they might be able to vote uh, because there were no sufficient ballots. Thank you very much. Do we have any other questions? Yes. Thank you. I'm Jürgen Zahaga from European Union Foreign Affairs Journal. Um, regarding the first question of my colleague uh, over there from the advice, do you have any figures uh, of possible voters who were not able to vote because of the lack of voting period has? And uh, does that figure uh, come close to, let's say, possible theoretical or hypothetical threshold of 3%. The short answer, because we don't observe outside the country, is that we don't know uh, the number. We're relying, as others, on press reports and the comments of the CDC. The number of people who voted in the Republic of Moldova was over 1.6 million. So one can uh, begin to look at the answer to the second part of your question in that context. But as far as the actual number of people who may have wished to vote uh, at these specific five polling stations, uh, as I say, it would only be speculation based on uh, press reports at this point. Thank you. Do we have another question? If there are no more questions, I will close this press conference. I remind you once again that the statement is available on our respective websites and you can find copies outside of this room. Thank you.
Демократические могут быть демократические выборы. Все, выключай. Если партии не существуют демократические, они... А какой демократии можно выбрать? Я сам лично знаю, как они платили. Мы разговаривали с различными мэрами. Мы платили людей. Ай, это было очень хорошо. Это просто... Это просто... Это просто... Это просто... Это просто... Это просто... Это просто...